So if you take a look at this one, there's one more nice thing here. I have a picture. So why is this picture not on our example? So maybe we should maybe we should add that one. Let me show you if I go to this product here. If I go to related, I have a logo for every car. Keep this logo as small as possible. 20 kilobytes is already, uh, it's already a pretty big logo. Uh, four or five kilobytes for a logo is much nicer. Then your documents are, are uh, smaller. You use less storage in Salesforce. Your emails are smaller. Your customers are more happy and everything will work a, a lot faster as well. So in the end, I actually want to just want to take this logo from my file. Huh? It's a file logo and I want to show this on my documents. Cool. So let's first do that. What I'm going to do here, I'm going to split these cells. Okay. Oh, sorry. That was not a good idea. Um, what I'm going to do here is just, uh, I'm not going to split the cells. I'm just going to add a picture here. And I'm just going to say that the picture can actually just float over everything and then I can position it where I want. So I position it right in the corner of my documents over here. My picture will have uh, a certain name and that is required. So this is called car picture. So uh, very important because I need to have this name to know where I have to fill in the picture dynamically. Okay, I saved this already. Cool. Now go back to Salesforce and you know the drill already. Yeah? You know now that I have to select this picture and I need to tell the system how to get to this picture. So this is a little bit more tedious. So uh, uh, you can repeat this video as much as you want, of course. What I'm going to do first is now go back to my very first um, data source. So sometimes you have to refresh that one. Um, okay, so this is my top level data source for my main quote line items. System is not happy. What's going on? Okay, just a Salesforce hitch, it seems, but I'm there now. Okay, so my Salesforce was a little bit hanging, but now all is done. Um, now back, I'm going to go to the Stockel Builder, and I'm going to add a field. I'm going to add a field, the field that says which product I'm actually on, because my picture is linked to the product. So I'm going to add the field for the product. That's identifier fast like this one. It will be the identifier of this product. So the API name will be, yeah. So it's a lookup towards product. So I added this field now. So now the system knows perfectly uh, how these uh, items are linked. Uh, sorry, which product I'm using. And now I'm going to again add a new child data source. So related to this product. I want to have, uh, I want to get all of the pictures. So it's going to be a picture list data source. Okay. I want to get it from files, uh, attachments. That's all outdated. I wanted to start with logo. Um, I'm going to call it Academy Logos Training One. Okay, it's linked to my uh, my parent, and now the of course I have to now fill in the field manually, and the field was uh, sbqq underscore underscore product underscore underscore c. So this was the field of my uh, uh, of my parent, so my main quote light items, and my picture, my logo will be linked to uh, to this product and how to the system can identify the product is through this field. Okay, save. It's now done. The field is there. So only two small steps left. I'm going to 
uh, upload my file again. Save. Uh, next up is I'm going to add this uh, item here. What I'm not going to forget at this time is that I need to add my picture data source. I'm just going to reload this data source here. So there's a reload button. You can click it as much as you want. Because I added the field, the field product was not uh, here yet, but now I added it in my uh, data source. So I also need to add it to this configuration. And now I can add a second child. So it will already propose which child it's, uh, the data source has. So I'm going to take the logos ones. So it perfectly knows now how, how all of these are uh, linked. Add it, and you can see that this, it's on the same level as the option packs, and the logos are also there. So now, as a child of this table, so that's the table that I'm going to repeat here, this entire table. Yeah, as the child of this table, I now want to say that it needs to get a picture out there. And of course, it wouldn't be PDF better if there is no uh, config type uh, called picture to do that. So there's only one data source that has picture, so it already knows this one. And okay, I want to show the car picture. So the formatting ratio, very important. Uh, I don't, don't want to mess up my templates. So uh, I have some room to grow down. So actually I want to say that the width has to be constant and the height will be, uh, um, will, will scale following the ratio of the width. So even if my picture is a little bit higher than the, uh, uh, the placeholder that I have here. The width will stay the same, but my picture can grow a little bit to the bottom. So that's fine. Okay, save the server. Let's take a look. Huh? Moment of truth. Click the button. And the document is there. It's just loading the previewer. And wow, as you can see, exactly what I wanted. I have my overview. I have my car. I have my option packs, all of this structure here. So nicely on the next page, my second car, the other picture. So my perfect structure. Only one